he's got all the power. That's what I say. Robin Swan is very dangerous. Robin Wand is very dangerous. Sobbing Mom is very dangerous. Goblin Bond is very dangerous. Elton John is very dangerous. A frozen Pawn is very dangerous. Nob and Sean is very dangerous. Come on, Snake Rat. You want to do it with me? Robin, Robin Swan, Swan is very dangerous. dangerous. Sean Min Son is extremely, extremely dangerous. Anyway, let's start the Sly Guy podcast. No, it starts when I say so. That's when it starts. I'm the Sly Guy. Hello and welcome to another episode of the weekly episodic podcast experience. That is the Sly Guy podcast. Welcome one, welcome all. I don't care if you're non-binary. I don't care if you're a guy. I don't care if you, you're you a woman. I don't care. You're all welcome here. Come into Davy's house. We're all welcome. Are you a cat? Meow. Come on in. We're welcoming everyone. And we're we're having fun time. Listen, it's a nice time to be alive. And it's, it's, it's the weather. It's happening. It's starting to come into summertime. I'm feeling... I don't, have a, I don't have a jacket on for the first time in... I think how many episodes? I got a little bit... Um, I was going to say subconscious, that's the wrong phrase, like a little bit uh, self-conscious in the last while because someone started like messaging me, being like, nice hoodie mate, and I was like, oh cheers, and then they were like, you wore one last week, I'm like, yeah no, I like to wear fucking hoodies, what is it to you, and then it got in my head and I was like, i got to stop wearing hoodies, I wear hoodies every damn week, and now I've been looking back in previous episodes to be like, I can't wear the same hoodie two weeks in a row, or people are going to think I'm a, a T-ramp, and nobody wants that, so I'm here in a t-shirt, a nice fresh new red t-shirt people are going to probably think it's harry potter because of the h it means something else if you know you know yeah I hit my nose as if it was some kind of drug hey if you know you know it's my coke dealer the guy that sells me coke I, this is not actually my nose it's a clip on nose i don't have a nose i actually look like you know the big red head guy out of like some fucking is it captain america ben you're a bit of a nerd aren't you you like all those sort of comic things is there like a big dude whose head is a skull in Captain America? It's the big red skull and he doesn't have a nose. He's like a skeleton. Google him. Come on. This is one thing that people have been messaging me about too. It's like, is Ben 70? And I was like, what do you mean is Ben 70? And you're like, it takes him about seven years to look anything up on his computer. I'm like, he's actually younger than me. You don't get me to search your normal yeah. Facebook, to be fair. Yeah, but I mean, listen, how hard is it to type into, into Google guy who is a big red faced bald skull looking guy without a nose from Captain America yeah, I've, I've, I haven't but I don't know his name yet you don't know his name and this is what we're talking about I'd love it if it was just Craig you know that's a character's name just Craig this big bald headed guy with a red face no nose Craig his name is Johan Smith Johan Smith I mean it sounds like somebody that Ulster would get as a lock on a season deal and then he'd just be on big money back to the Sharks after a season Johan Smith Nice. A Nazi. a Nazi. I mean, call him something like, you know, Dietmar Gross. You know, call him an actual German name. No, Johann Smith, very disrespectful to the South Africans out there. Like, why don't they just give him a name? Like, you know, like, baddies, I don't like the way baddies don't have great names anymore. You know what I mean? Like, whatever happened to, like, Skeletor or the Penguin? You know, like, give them pro. Like, they just have normal names now, like Johann Smith or Gary. You know, Gary. Gary Thompson, just a guy. Who's what's Gary Thompson? He's the ultimate villain out of He Man. Oh whoa. That's it. And check it check out a few. I'm gonna look at villains' names here. Just I mean, this is not the uh direction I thought I thought the podcast was gonna to go today, but listen, we're having a fun time. We're out of the house. It's all good in the hood. Let's see, who do we have here? Um Villain names. Oh, wow. Great villain names. Wicked Whip, The Warmonger, The Ripper. I mean, are these real things or are people just suggest... I was even better. Someone's actually taking time to, to be like, listen, there's too many people called Peter that are villains, so we need to shatter ruin. I mean, that sounds like someone that would be a wrestler, which is pretty good. Um, Great villain names. Onslaught, Ego, Saren. Um, uh, great super villain names from films. Who are some super villains? Yeah, well, Hannibal Lecter. That's a good name. It's a normal name, but it is. Like, there's Catwoman, Th Thanos, Doctor Doom. There's a guy, like, do you reckon it, it has, like, his name's, like, like your Mr. Harbinson? Do you reckon it's Dr. Harbinson? 
on his um on his thesis, or do you reckon he's like, you know, I'm too evil to be called Hobbinson, and I've got to be called Doom going forward. Like, who's Raz Al Ghul? Do you know who that is? Is he out of something Batman, maybe? I have no idea. Oh, come on, Ben, you're supposed to be a super nerd. How don't you know more of these? Lex Luthor, I thought he was a wrestler at Power Slam, Yoko Zuno. Low key, Thanos. Dr. Otto Octavius, I like that. Is that Dr. Octopus? From the, the Spider Man film, Doc Ock? Dog, dog, what a big fat, whoa. Um, I mean, who, I don't know who this guy is, but I like him as a villain. Norman Osborn. <laughs> I mean, people probably listen to this, all these super nerds that are really into like, um, what's that called? I don't even know. Marvel? Or like, it's actually Norman Osborn. He's somebody else. Norman Osborn is um, a super villain. In Mar- of course, he's in Marvel, created by Stan Lee. And what did he do? Just, just just turns out he's a sly guy. That's it. There's no no super skilled in Norman Osborn. Ultron, Dark Seed, Red Skull. That's what the guy's known as, not just Johan Smith. Red Skull. You know, it's a better name than just Johan Smith. I mean, this guy's got a pretty sweet name, Deathstroke. I mean, that that's a super villain I will see in um, Purgatory because it's probably likely to be my cause of death. A stroke. I like this guy's name, Carnage. Is what it is. Just comes in, fucks the place. Apocalypse, you know. Bullseye, Mysterio, and I'll finish on this one, Kingpin, just a big fat guy, looks like me, don't know how we ended up going down there, but we're looking at supervillains, and there's actually a supervillain arriving to get me here, so what were we talking about before we get into supervillains? I have sent you a supervillain name generator, if you want to... A supervillain name generator? Right, okay, let me see, um, my name would be a name generator. I'll do you first, okay? Oh, or said the actress to the bishop. I mean, camp humor never gets. I mean, come on. There's so many diff- like things to fill in, right? Okay. How many would you like? I want just one. One example. I want to. Would you like a a super villain character? Yes. Yes, please. What gender would you like them to be? Uh, male. Would be the male. Describe your villain. I'm gonna say snake. And um, what el- animal is your villain most like? Hey, a rat. And what birth? What's your birth year? Nineteen eighty nine. Ninety. Ninety. Oh, young, young bastard. Um, nineteen ninety. How would you describe their nationality? I would say, I mean, it's it's gonna divide the audience. Ben's like without a doubt British. So go British. Um. Let's see. There's a don't know Philip Matter option. I mean, there you go. Begins with I don't even care. Let's go. I mean, but it doesn't even matter with the family name. Begins with, it do, It doesn't matter. Let's just go. Let's see what we get. And write me some villain names. Here we go. It's associating. I mean, <laughs> I like this character's name. Your character, you know what his real name is? James Brown. Hey! <laughs> get up! A.K.A. Dr. Snake. <laughs> I mean, that's appropriate for you. Dr. Snake. I like that one. I mean, that's all they've given. Let me see. That just, that <laughs> they took all the information and they're like, listen. James Brown, also, and I put in brackets, Jim. <laughs> Sometimes when he's that, oh, here we go. The name for a male rat like snake, supervillain, born in 1990. He's from Corn. He's Cornish, English, Scottish, and Welsh. James Brown, aka Doctor Snake. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll go. I'll do one for me now. Right. Like one name. Um. In fact, I'll generate five for me. What about that? In fact, I'll, I want to generate five for you. I'm just going to do it five others to see. Who else would give me other than James Brown, aka Jim, <laughs> Doctor Snake? Um, let's see. Write me some other names. There we are. It's generating. Oh, oh well. Oh shit, this is pretty good. Joshua Brown, James's brother, <coughs> who's also Cornish, English, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh, also known as Josh, aka Ben of Hitted. Snake rat. <laughs> there you go. Joshua Brown, the snake rat. Or you could be Andrew Moore, Moore. But what's the shorter ver- shortened version of Andrew? Andres. No, Andres. So you just when you, aka Snake Man. Or you could be Ma- Ma- Matthew White. What's he, his nickname? Shortened version of Matthew? Matt. Mate. He's called Mate, aka Rat Man. Oh, wow. Here's one that might stick. Michael Adams, a.k.a. Mickey. Supervillain name, Captain Snake. <laughs> and the last one, which is probably... <laughs> the shittest villain of all time. 
James Collin, Col- James Collins, aka James. <laughs> Super villain name, Grass Man. <laughs> oh. Grass Man's coming to get you. <laughs> I mean, he- either he's just a guy. It just it like he could give you pollen. Actually, he could put the pollen in your eyes and he just give you hay fever, Grass Man. Or either that, or he's just a very. Very spiteful guy who's like, you know what? I'll get him in the long grass. I'll buy him a time. I'll wait until the moment's ripe and then I'll get my vengeance. And that's James Collin, aka James. Grass man. A frustrating, yeah, the man that makes your grass grow. <laughs> Fucking grass man. <laughs> I like grass man would just be the neighbour and he'd just look at you over the fence like this. <laughs> Yes, I see you put your lawnmower away. <laughs> False move, mister. <laughs> You'd be like, for fuck's sake, it's grass and you're a bastard. Wait, weed man would be his mate. You know, it also could, they could both have cannabis connotations. Let's see, generate five name. To describe me, I would say I'm a stonehead. So put a stone, stonehead, and I'll say gap toothed. Birth year, 1986, old bastard. How, you know, you're British, so I'll say that I am. I mean, I'm drawn towards Afghan. <laughs> I'll go. I'll be an Afghan guy. Um, and let's see, there we go. Let's have a look at what people say about my supervillain Afghan name, the Stonehead. Oh, no. <laughs> Aziz Jones. Sounds like a UFC fighter. Aziz Jones, a.k.a. Stonehead Gaptooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that's brilliant or I mean this is a good one <laughs> Abdul Davies aka Agent Stonehead <laughs> oh wow he, this one's a, a, a competitor for Grassman oh. Oh. Alistair Miller aka Gaptooth man. <laughs> oh shit, superhero! The Gaptoothed man. <laughs> oh wow. All right, this is a nice. Uh, this is a nice Afghan name. Cher Blaesi. You know, Cher Blaesi. Pretty, pretty adventurous name. Superhero name. Stonehead man. <laughs> and then Farouk Moore. Just for some reason, I don't know the context. Just bridge man. So I mean. What's that got to do? Maybe it's the bridge. I don't know. Farouk. Uh, yeah, very in. I mean, I could, I'm could. i going to do more. Should we do Should we do one more? If I was, let me see. What else could you say? About your upturned nose for the old Campbellian. I'll maybe put that in. Or put you in as an American, right? So, adjective to describe your villain. Um, we'll say upturned nose. Nose, and I'm also going to, it says animal you're most like, I'm just going to write de- deceitful, even though it's not an animal, and just see if it gives you uh, an interesting American name for a character, so deceitful upturned nose, I mean, <laughs> this is some old Campbellian stuff, I say, write me some supervillain names, Matthew Brown, aka, the evil upturned nose deceitful man, <laughs> so bad oh I'm old Jim, Jimmy Moore aka Upturned Nose Man and then I like this one this is just this sounds like it's a Clint Eastwood film Joshua White starring in The Deceitful Man I mean very enjoyable I mean I like this one Agent Upturned Nose <laughs> I mean I don't know where this comes from Duplicious Man I don't know that's pretty that's a lot of fun I mean I could just sit and do that all day but I'm, I'm gonna avoid it I think um very enjoyable. Oh, that's very, very enjoyable. Um, So I don't even know how that came about. I was going to say to you there, Ben, what's the score in the Spain game? By the way, the Euros are on at the minute. They have started. We're getting into them. I have, a, I have an on-running bet at the minute that is on a load of teams to win, and Spain need to win to take me into my last day, which is when they need Portugal to beat Hungary. So, Spain. Come on. No. Fuck shit. Fuck's sake. How have you been enjoying the Euro so far? Did you see the goal uh, Czech Republic scored today? No. Oh, y- y- right, okay. I'm going to show you this. This is 10 out of 10. By the way, it's 
this is the podcast content people come to see. They they love it when I do this. Um, let me see. Look up stuff on my phone and just show Czech Republic gold. Right, Ben, will you see this? I want to be the man to show you this. Come over and see. Here we are. This is for everyone who hasn't seen it. This is an absolute worldly of a goal, right? Patrick Shaker, which by the way sounds like a guy that would definitely sell you poppers and Thompsons. Patrick Shaker, see him in the toilet, it'll be a good time. But yeah, the Euros are on, so we're in the middle of a game right now and we're recording the podcast. If if ever there was there was dedication to the, that's it. You know that's it. I'd much rather be watching the Euros. You need to give me a score update if Spain score. If Sweden score, don't tell me because I'll just fucking hang up the podcast and say no. I might cash out my bet too. Is this the the content people want to know if I'm going to cash out my bet or not? I'm getting squeaky bum time. Who knows? Who knows? This is it. What we're doing. But yeah, the Euros obviously quite rightly have been overshadowed this week by the truly awful. You know what? It's it's one. It's weird to say. It's both horrendous and also one of the best bits of news. You know what I mean? Does that even make sense to people? What happened to Christian Eriksen? Like when you saw him collapse in the pitch, obviously. For those who didn't see, he was just playing a game for Denmark against Finland. And then just in the middle of it, someone threw the ball to him from a throw-in and he just collapsed on the on the pitch. And at the time, nobody really knew what exactly... Obviously, people were aware it was serious. They weren't sure exactly what had happened. But then now we found out he'd suffered cardiac arrest, which is horrific. Now, the whole game was postponed until later that night when... We thankfully found out that he was well. You know, obviously he's a f- absolutely smashing footballer. You know, probably one of the most creative footballers in the world. You know, he's an amazing playmaker, and to see that happen to somebody is horrendous. Like it brought back memories of of the time it happened to uh, Fabrice Mwamba when he was playing for Bolton against Spurs. That was horrible. You know, I, thank goodness he survived. But then there's been guys in the past that have have just died. You know, and it's been horrendous. Like Mark Vivian Fowe, it happened to him. Miklos Ferrer for Benfica. There was these people who just were not as fortunate as uh, to live, but thankfully over the years, you know the the health and safety and having defibrillators at pitches and stuff have improved. But that wait, see that period when you're just waiting for news, you're just hoping and hoping he's all right. So from being so like sick, do you just get that sick feeling in your stomach? Like I just got an absolute like you know that Sunday night feeling in your stomach, being like, oh my god, you know. What has happened here? Then the the footage of it was like, why are you still you know showing this? Stop, like go to, like I don't know the 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 drone or something. You know, go back to the studio. Let but it was just such a horrendous thing. And then obviously word started um trickling out that he was awake, which is obviously amazing. Because above all else, you just want to know the guy's going to be healthy. You know what I mean? It was like that. Wait, no, you're just going on oh, shit. And I obviously, I mean. The selfish thing is it ruined the whole day of football. To be fair, I had Denmark in a bet and then their heads were away, obviously, and they lost to Finland. How are they losing to Finland? You know, but that moment was just, yeah, such a relief to know he was okay. And, you know, obviously, I'd imagine that'll probably be him him probably not playing anymore. So it'd be the career over. You'd imagine if, you know, you thought there was any kind of risk that that might happen to you again, you'd probably pack it in. But, you know, the whole reaction to it and like some of the, the Denmark players, like the captain, Simon Kjar, who, by the way, is in my dream team. Should have probably got extra points for his heroism. Didn't. UEFA, come on, sort us out. But he kind of was there. He stopped Ericsson from swallowing his tongue, put him in a recovery position, got the guys on with the defib, got his players to stand around Christian Ericsson while he was getting treated. So the cameras weren't just like, you know, right in his face. You all right, mate? You going to any fucking chance here? Where? And then it's like, Someone must have been like, oh, by the way, he's not in a good way, but his wife's in the crowd. So then the cameraman's, I tell you what, let you just fire ahead there, you're in or whatever you're doing. Where's your missus? Garner Lampside, there you go, I'll make for some good fucking television there. I mean, have some bloody decorum. And then everyone's straight on to the BBC. Unbelievable. But what they don't realise, the BBC, probably freelance guys just filming it in Denmark, just Danish guys being like, this is a hot scope, we want it. You know, Johan Schmidt <laughs> just taking the... But yeah, it was a horrendous thing to see. Thank God he's all right. And, you know, a lot of people have their have their opinion on like, oh, football's a terrible game, this is awful. And then people are like, how fucking dare you say it? It's bringing the world together because they're all delighted someone didn't die. I mean, you know, obviously you should be happy 
someone's not died, you shouldn't be happy that it's happened because it's horrendous. But you know that's unfortunately part. It seems to just be part and parcel of of modern day sport. Do you think they're pushing athletes too far? Do you think that's what's happening, Ben? Or what? What's your? I mean, just want to point out, Ben. What is your What is your day job? What are you professionally? A state agent, not a cardiologist. Just want to point that out. So any opinions I have or Ben has, you know, they're probably not too accurate. You know, see if it was me, I'd be like, listen, is he dead on? Is he awake? Can he run it off? Go ahead. Back out there. You know, go ahead. What would you, what would your thoughts be on the matter? Do you think there should be any changes made to football? Or do you think seeing what happened at the, that elite professional level, has? do you think that should trickle down more to amateur? Or what's your view on it? I kind of just thought the Euros were too soon. The Euros were too soon? And you're pushing on these athletes just a bit too much. Yeah, but you know what? I You know who I have respect for out of all of this, above all else? See the people that die on the sword of football players get paid too much. And they're like, listen, it doesn't fucking matter. He, gets, he shouldn't be getting 90 grand a week. Fuck them, fuck them. You know, people are out there going like, listen, he gets paid... You, you can get all the money in the world a week if you're dead. It's a fat lot of good having that. You get to pay too much, but see, in sport, that's it's it's dough. Like you know, people are earning the big dough, and I just think the whole thing is just it's mad. Like and people are, you know, saying it's got to be done at all levels, but there's only so much you can do. People have problems, like undiagnosed conditions, but I do think that certain athletes are are under the pressure to perform too much. Now, what I did see, someone put a tweet out. And again, I liked it. I don't know if I retweeted it, but definitely liked it. it. was like, let's just bear a minute to think that in two years' time, FIFA are going to force people to go and play in the blistering heat in Qatar, all for dough. So, I mean, I think maybe they should look at that again. That was probably on par with one of the worst decisions in football. Let's, do those guys over there have a bit of dough? The UEFA are like, those those Qatari boys have some dough, they have some oil, don't they? Those sheiks and all. Like, I send them over. Send the guys over to play football in a in a temperature hotter than a sauna. Go ahead, fucking see how your ticker does out there, Muck. You know what I mean? It's like a total fucking joke. But that is football. Football is a business, and unfortunately, the heart is out of football now. So, you know, maybe that is a a a reflection of the times, and maybe we need to take it back again. We need to get rid of VAR. We need to just let lads two foot each other again. You know, and he said double fist each other. That's entirely wrong. Two foot each other. Just go back to good old days when you'd be offside and all. Great. You know, and when Arsenal could win games, that's probably another point. But yeah, it was definitely an eye opener. It was horrible to see. But on the bright side, he is okay. Because, I mean, it would be, you know, the worst thing could have happened in that circumstance, Ben. You know what I mean? In that moment, the worst thing imaginable could have happened. The Euros could have been cancelled, and that would have been horrendous. You know, so thank God Christian Eriksen is on the mend. Let's hope Denmark win a game now because I mean Finland were there for the taking, but Finland were just ruthless mug off merchants. They're like, yeah, you're really upset, are you? Fuck you, one nil, get in there. And to be fair, it did duff my bet up, so I'm not happy about that. And I lost, and again, UEFA lost points in Simon Kjar, so give me some more, some more points in that. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I must admit, I am enjoying the Euros. Any score in the Wales game or the Spain game? No, nope. sixty minutes. Sixty. Spain will win. They gotta win. Why? Why are you saying that? Sweden look pretty good. Yeah, Spain are just boring. Yeah, well, who's Spain's coach? There you go. I don't know. So, I thought it was the guy. Was it the guy who's who's sick and he's better, Luis Enrique? I mean, what if, was it that fella that was sick again? Now he's better. No, if Spain don't beat Sweden, I will lose ten points and I'll not be happy. I'll never go back to Spain on my holidays again. And you can deal with that Spanish. See what you do. You can tell fucking whoever tell Pablo Picasso to stick his paintbrushes up his hole. If Spain don't win this game, I'm never going back to Spain on my holidays. Apart from like Tenerife, because that's not really part of mainland, or Lanzarote, you know, or probably somewhere like fucking Malaga, because it's down at bottom. <laughs> so don't worry about it. But yeah, I'm distracted a little bit. But it's all a good time. It is. A, it is fun. It is good. And is it just a bit too hot? Are you warm in here? I'm going to be a bit sweaty again. Like, see, every week I look back at this. Do we need to get a makeup team? I think we need to get a makeup team in the podcast. Get my face all done up. Make me look a bit less shiny. Like, people have messaged me and be like, you're always wearing jumpers. Why are you sweating? It's fucking roasting up here. We are in, like, the bell tower of a, of a building and it's just constantly warm. Horrendous. 
And it is what it is, but I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to be getting out again. I'm excited to be getting back gigging. There's a big gig, and I, I don't know, again, if I can announce it. I'm pretty sure that I can, but we're doing a gig at the Boneyard, Pug Ugly's Boneyard, um, on the 30th of June. And it's going to be a pretty good night. The lineup for the gig is as follows. It's me. It's Diona Doherty. It's Aaron McCann. And it's Colin Geddes. So what a, what a night that's going to be. That will sell out probably by the time this podcast is out. So this this is the gig will be announced tom- tomorrow on Wednesday. And this podcast is out on Thursday. It's actually not. Tomorrow's not Wednesday. It's Tuesday. But hey, be too busy thinking about supervillains' names and why I didn't get any points for Simon Carr. Fuck's sake. But um, yeah, so that should sell out. So I will put tickets on my Patreon. It doesn't matter because... This will be out late anyway, but um, it will be a fun time. I'm actually looking at the clock now, going like, fuck, I need to stick out my Patreon. Ben, how long have I been talking for? I feel like it's been like 10 minutes. 26 minutes. 20, yes! Love chatting for 26 minutes. This is going to be a shorter one this week because I want to go and watch the end of Spain game, but we'll not worry about that. 20 minutes. 20 minutes? I mean, fuck's sake. Um, maybe I'll just pause and stop and you know just go and watch the game but yeah other than that what else do I want to talk about we have gigs of, of pugs um, my other podcast I'm doing um, with Shane which is not Boytown because obviously we know what happened there but it's Dad Boys is doing really well we got feedback on it today that it's like in the top 10 shows on sounds in the country so that's good you know and we haven't even really promoted it that much yet. So if you haven't listened to Dad Boys yet, please get on BBC Sounds and listen to it. If we're allowed, I think it's being put on Apple Podcasts. I don't know for sure because Apple is um, a bunch. Of, they're a bunch of bastards. Um, and I think they just keep cancelling it because we've got a good few number of reviews on it. But they're like, because it's Sounds, they're a bit iffy about it. So, I mean... There we have it, but do listen, and if you enjoy it, please do share it out, it helps the podcast. It's only like a, what's the word, a pilot? Why, why, my brain, Ben, my brain's broken. You have a big edit to do in this podcast tonight, because I'm just making no sense. But um, yeah, it's it's a pilot series of six episodes, and obviously, dependent on how they do, you know, there may be more. I would like to do it more, obviously. I feel like it's, it's fun, we've kind of got our groove now. All six episodes are recorded, and they'll be out accordingly. And yeah, it's been a good time. Have you listened to any, Ben? Yes, see, he is a big supporter. He's been listening, and I love it. What's been your favourite episode? Um, your man, Craskill. Aaron Craskill. See, it was a great episode, and obviously that was the episode about sleep, yeah. which is something that you do struggle with, um, because normally whenever you're in bed, you're wearing leather, and uh, have your face set up, which is hard, I'm sure, to sleep whenever. <laughs> but anyway, each their own. But yeah, it was a fun episode. Aaron Craskill is, good, is a good guy, a lot of fun. And this week's episode is with a guy called Simon Hooper. You know who Simon Hooper is? He's a he is an influencer. He is a man who has an Instagram account, and it's a very catchy handle, Father of Daughters. And believe it or not, he has daughters, four of them, which is twice as many daughters as I have. Which means he's a super ultimate feminist. Which means I have to defeat him because I viewed myself as the ultimate feminist. But it was a great episode. We chatted about parenting with 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 daughters primarily. And that's you know my jam because I'm the fa- I'm a I myself I'm a father of daughters. I only have girls, and you know I worry about certain things about them growing up, you know having problems that I'll have to deal with boyfriends and the like and all this sort of shit. Or girlfriends, who knows? But I just think it would be easier for I think if it's easier to parent your own gender. Would you agree with that, Ben? In terms of your own experience, like I don't know what it is like growing up as a girl. I can reimagine it not being great all the time and then me not knowing how to deal with certain things you know so I asked him how do you deal with it he just said leave them my wife fuck's sake go let, let her deal with the problem and I went dead on I said what do you do instead of like trying to parent your daughters he's like I just go in the office and get there's this wee app I have to put in a few details and it gives me like my, my super villain name I was like nice so I said what's your super villain name and he was like um John Patterson aka father daughter killer and I was like oh well it's kind of aggressive but listen he he likes what he likes and yeah it was a fun episode so you can check that out next week's episode I think is God has got Jason Byrne which by the way great episode um and then the last episode is with JB Gill from JLS which I mean I found it very tough to interview one of the guys from JLS and not just solely speak 
about the music of JLS for the entire episode because I'm a big fan. So yeah, it's doing well. Check that out, please, on Sounds. And if you like it, share it. And if you don't, keep your opinions to yourself because they're hurtful. Um, we I also with this podcast rate and review it too. I know that's I've said what's going to happen if I get to two hundred rates ratings and reviews i am going to hire a venue ben's going to film it and i'm going to fill it myself so that's if we get to 200 get it up there we got a new review this week and um, from so does mine which i think is a is a niche reference to an, an argument between two women on the nolan show about i think someone's daughter or something and they were like she's like my daughter does this and then the other one so does mine and then the other one so does mine so does mine so does mine so does mine it's like wow so does mine so i think that's a reference if i'm wrong you know mental breakdown it's okay but so does mine says this podcast is class loving the podcast at the minute what i like about that review is there's a time there's time scale on it loving this podcast at the moment but at any time i could decide it's fucking shit and i don't want to do it anymore I'm not listening, I'm going elsewhere and I'm going to listen to the Mudblood podcast. Fuck you, Dave, you've run out of time. I'm going to listen to to Tea With Me instead of this. But I mean, if you listen to this, you're not going to make that switch, but whatever, you know. There are other podcasts out there that are very good, you know, if, if people do have any to, to you know, recommend, let me know, keen for that. But thank you for the review, so does mine. And by the way, whoever gets the 200th review will get a prize. Um, Ulster Hall tickets more news this week that they are um, over half sold so bingo that's great We're, there's le- there's more than half the time left from I booked it until it is so we're ahead of schedule and s- does that make sense? Not at all so the from I booked the show till now is less time than it is from now until the show do you know what I mean? So if half the tickets are sold in a shorter time, it means there are less tickets but a longer time scale for people to get them. Do you know what I mean? So my point is, buy your tickets soon because all the good ones are going. And when we sell a few more, guess what's going to open up? My bum bum. No, the uh, the balcony. I mean, my bum will probably open and I'll let out a big fart and celebrate because it'll be squeaky bum time. But the balcony's going to open soon. So if you want to... I mean, I was going to say, like, the seats on the ground are great. So if, if you're on the ground, you get to, like, look up my shirt and see my belly. Whereas if you're on the balcony, you get to look down and see my bald head. So, I mean, everyone's everyone's a winner. But those tickets are, are going to be released soon. Ben, uh, ben, of course, will put a map of the Ulster Hall tickets here currently in the background. So you can all see, because I have to send them that now, probably after this. But that's where we're at um, at the minute. So we're, we're feeling good. We're enjoying... Promoting the Ulster Hall. Have Spain scored yet? Fuck 78 sake. minutes. 78 minutes. I'm going to have to cash out this bet. Um, but I mean, Spain is the sort of team that'll just play boring football and then celebrate the draw and be like, this is a... I mean, it's racist. <laughs> like, this is a fucking great. No, it's like... Um, what do we do Spanish? If Spanish people speak like this. They'll be like, is this slow start to the tournament? We'll pick up the game and blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look good um, for me and my bet. And I'll be raging. What it does look good for are my sponsors. The Sly Guy podcast is brought to you this week by Manscaped. Guys, you have to act quick. It's Father's Day on Sunday. If you want your dad to get rid of his bush in time so your mother can nosh down in his big foot long, you need to get on manscaped.com and use the code SLYGUY. That's manscaped.com. Use the code SLYGUY, all capitals, to get 20% off all the range of products and free shipping. Some of the products they have on there, they've got the Lawnmower 3.0, which is the third generation trimmer for your private parts. They've got the ceramic blade, they've got advanced skin safe technology. If you, like I mean, some people probably, I mean there are freaks out there Ben, aren't there? There are freaks everywhere. Some people like to hurt their dicks and balls for sexual pleasure, you being one of them. But I don't. I don't like to nick my balls. Actually before I started the podcast I got a letter um, and I opened it and I got paper cut my finger and I was really upset. And imagine cutting your dick or your balls. I'd be heartbroken so no longer do I do that because I use the lawnmower 3.0 just because the skin safe technology and the guard you think it's not going to nick but also it's got a light an LED light so it can guide guide you to your penis 
if you don't if for some reason you don't know where your cock is located in your body you can use this wee wee light to look around be like is my dick under my arm no it's not it's between my legs on my groin that's not my groin your groin's a, a wee muscle and thing it's it's on my pat my you know where ken has just a lump it's there. A mound, I should say, a lump sounds dangerous. If you have any lumps, get them checked out. That's a lawnmower 3.0. They also have this pretty snazzy new... They, they call it a cologne because they're American. I call it um, aftershave because I'm normal. And let me just try it on. I mean, you rub it in. It's just, it's enough to get a wee bit of a scent. You know, it is... It smells nice. It smells a little bit like my balls, you know? And I mean... Ben often says things about me. You know, say you're talking to people, Ben, and people ask you what your relationship is with me. What do you say? Open. Open is true, but you would say to people, if people ask you, what's Dave like? The first thing you'd say is, smells very good. He smells like my balls. And if you don't know Manscaped, that's probably a bit worrying. But we know Manscaped. We're fans of the of the Manscaped range in the show. And by the way, I make no bones about it. If you sponsor this podcast... You have to go through a very strict vetting process, which is, you know, do you offer us money? Yes, that that ignore that. But all other than that, you also have to, you know, be a product that we believe in. And Ben believes in shave pubes and fresh smelling ball bags, and so do I. So get on the manscaped.com, use the code SLAG, all caps, for 20% off and free shipping. The podcast is also brought to you, as usual, in association with Modest Beer. Modest are an independent brewery, as you well know, brewing craft beers here in Hollywood County Down. Um, Modest are on a journey with one clear goal in mind, and that goal is to not decimate the market, it's to not overrun the market, it's to just bring exceptional brews to the local craft beer market, and they're not here to revolutionise, they're just here to add to it with a brand that's joyous, honest, responsible, and of course, modest. If you're keen to know more, contact Modest Beer on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter at Modest Beer or go to their website www.modestbeer.co.uk to find the nearest stock as Ben of Spain scored. Ben, how long have we been talking for? 37 minutes. Okay, time to listen and get some listeners' questions. John Joe has said, fill me in on what the physique guy is. What are you looking at me like that for? I did? Not? Get on Patreon, there's loads of shit over there, patreon.com slag out podcast, there's going to be the Champions League of Weird, haven't filmed it yet, we're doing it next week, get a life good over there, it's great. Um, Giorgio said, fill me in on what physique guy escapades you've gotten up to this week, bro. Well, Giorgio is being a piece of shit here because he's my trainer and I have to fill out a form for him to tell him how I'm done, so he's going to get the ins and outs of what I've been up to, but listen, I'm happy to tell you. I am um, I'm trying a new thing at the minute. For me, one of the biggest things I find when I'm training or exercising or trying to lose weight is that, that, I like that, that I like routine and I like to not miss things. So I always find like if I'm busy, I sometimes miss a training session or I miss a meal or I fuck something up somewhere along the lines. And then once I'm off, I'm like, I've broken the window. I may as well just dive head first through it with my head, you know, and just fuck it. And I may as well just go to McDonald's. I may as well eat bonbons I mean they're not my sweets of choice but whenever I've gone off the rails I'll eat anything so I've decided you know what I'm going to be very careful with what I eat and I'm going to do 100 crunches every day now I mightn't even get to do a full workout or anything but I'm just going to do 100 crunches because that's going to make my body sore and that's going to make me feel like I've done something now as of recording I've not done my 100 crunches today whenever I finish this I'm going to get on the floor of the office I'm going to do 100 crunches and then I'm going to come back and do have a script to get finished that I should have finished two weeks ago that I have to finish tonight so I'll be doing my 100 crunches I've been eating well I've been walking I've been just you know being a healthier guy I've been thinking about what I'm putting in my body a lot more you know what I mean and I, I definitely feel like I am healthier for it and I do know this is this is another thing I'm assessing what I'm doing in advance of doing it does that make sense to you Ben for example I have been invited out with some work colleagues to watch some Euro matches on Friday with a few beers. I'm normally an anti-social guy. You know, I normally just be like, nah, I'd rather, I've got plans. And they're like, what are your plans? I'd be like, well, I'm just going to sit in a pair of tracksuit bottoms and eat my dinner in front of an episode of Marcella. And they're like, well, that's not really plans. I'm like, well, it is what it is. So I'm going to go out with them. I'm going to have a nice time. I'm going to have a few beers. On Saturday, I'm going out with another couple for dinner. I'll probably have a few beers there too. 
And then on Sunday, it's Father's Day. So, I mean, there's a high chance that I'll have a beer. So, my point being is, in that period, I'm going to up. I'm going to watch what I eat to a point. I'm going to do more workouts. And I'm going to burn more calories those days. Saturday might be a, tr- a problem because I'll have a hangover. But I'm still going to get my crunches in. Come hell or high water. And then it is what it is. And I've lost weight this week. So, I'm going to be super strict from now up until then. I'm going to enjoy myself a bit. Because it's, it's not about going. And, I'm not a bodybuilder. I know some people probably look at me and go, you can definitely try it. I know, but I'm not. I'm just a normal guy trying to live a normal life. So, you know, I just want to try to have balance as opposed to being super strict. But I, I feel like I'm in a good place with the training at the minute. The The hike based life is on the, on the way up. The physique guy movement is going strong. Physique guy summer is just around the corner. And by the way, by total coincidence, you know when I finish my 100 day crunch challenge, Ben? On my birthday. So that's pretty sweet. <laughs> I'll be at my birthday September, so it seems like an absolute century away. But listen, we'll get through it. And by then, I'll just have a sore tummy. No abs, because it doesn't burn the fat, but it's not the point. It's a mental thing rather than a physical thing. All right, get off my back. Michael Kerr's head is Robin Swan, a very dangerous man. Um, I, The ASAP podcast has said, Van Morrison, that's all. And Patrick Quinn has said, how do you feel about Van the Man's comments? As someone who works in li- a live gig and in entertainment, it must have been extremely hard for you to plan anything all year in comedy. I think Robin Swan has done a great job personally as this was a totally new virus. Well, I'll, I'll hit all those questions in one. Firstly, Michael, is Robin Swan very... De- I don't know. I think a lot of like... Th- like a real boring thing to do nowadays, jiu-jitsu. Everyone does it. Oh, I do jiu-jitsu. And blah, blah. They all want to be like Joe Rogan want to be. So there's a high chance that Robin Swan is maybe a blue belt or above in jiu-jitsu, and in which case he could be a very dangerous man. Would he be as dangerous as a Steven Seagal? No, but that's not the point. Maybe he is dangerous. I don't feel he is dangerous in the way that Van Morrison said he was dangerous. I believe Van Morrison, and I need to be careful here because I don't want to get sued by Van Morrison, but I believe it's safe to say that Van Morrison himself is a bit of a twat. You know, I think, you know... You know, in, 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 in a technical term, the guy is a root. You know, I think people can can safely say throughout the years he's got a reputation of being a bollocks. And I think, you know, his response to COVID has been that of a rich, entitled twat. And then I think, you know, he's just carried that on. What would make me think he's also a twat is that when he cancels a concert and just has people out for dinner with him, he invites Ian Pacey Jr. I think anyone invites IPJ, you know, not the kind of guy you want to be best friends with. And it's easy to say, Paisley did definitely scunder himself, but he probably doesn't care because he's the, the least embarrassed man in the world. He'd probably just go and reside in Sri Lanka for a four-week all-inclusive holiday paid for by the tax player to get, a tax player, playboy, to get over that. Um, last question is from Naomi, and she just said, well, that didn't go to plan. Hopefully this is a link to Van Morrison saying, Robin Swanee is very dangerous. Um, but believe it or not, it's it's something to do with sex from Naomi. Shocker. Man's racy surprise for girlfriend backfires when her housemates and his mum catch him. Oh no. A man couldn't catch a break when he was left red faced as he was caught out twice trying to give his girlfriend a spicy surprise. And now he's got some explaining to do. And that's the end. Of the, no. A man claims to be left red faced after he tried to deliver a racy surprise for his girlfriend. Like that's such a tabloid newspaper. A racy surprise. A saucy girlfriend. You know, a raunchy boyfriend. Um, but his plan backfired when he was caught by her housemates and his mum. Sharing a story anonymously, the man said that he decided to drive naked to pick up his girlfriend. Which wasn't the best idea he's ever had. But he didn't expect it to go so badly. I mean, why be naked in the car? Surely that is a crime. If you could stop the lights and like a kid just looks out the window and sees your dick. Pedo. Um, he got undressed in his house, got in his car, which was in the garage, then drove over to see her, all without being spotted. But the day went downhill when he saw his girlfriend standing in the rain with her two housemates. Panicked, the man says he drove home quickly to get changed. But when he arrived at his house, his mum was blocking his driveway. <laughs> and when he pulled up, she ran straight up to him and looked through the car window despite his protests. Sharing a story on Reddit, the man said, I was thinking it'd be kind of kinky. There's another word. I was thinking it'd be kind of kinky. It's being scored. Stop looking at your phone. Getting me all excited. Um, I thought it'd be kind of kinky to show up naked, but what? Can you score? Fuck's sake. 
behind the wheel saying something. What? What? Did they miss the target, or is it back in play, or what? Uh, off the line clearance, nineteen minutes to go. Nineteen minutes. Get it on the far over the line. Behind the wheel saying something silly like, "Excuse me, ma'am, did you call an Uber X?" I imagine they're laughing, but they absurdly also got somewhat turned on by he's a pervert by the nudity. I wasn't worried about other people catching me because my plan was not to interact with anyone else and to stay in the car until I was back inside my garage. All of them were frantically waving at me, like, please God, please hurry, it's pouring. I had two choices, to proceed as planned and accept my fate, or preserve my dignity and leave my girlfriend and roommates in the rain. I drove out there feeling conflicted as fuck. The man said he then called his girlfriend to try and make some excuses for his behaviour, but in the end thought it best come clean and tell her the truth, but asked her to lie to her housemates. However, she told him there was no need, as the conversation had been on speakerphone and they'd heard the whole thing. <laughs> Very enjoyable. Um... And his mum called him. There you go. <laughs> I don't want to say anymore. I'm so nervous about this fucking Spain result. Um, and it's my... Do I cash out? I probably will get no money. Should I cash out on the thing? Five minutes. Five minutes. Come on, Spain. You Spanish bastards. You know what Bet365 probably have done? Probably made it unsuitable for me to cash out. I would say. Let me see. Um... I can cash out for three pounds fifty two, or you know what? I'm not going to do it. I'm going to hold on and hope the Spanish score. Because you know what happened the last time I was betting on here, Juventus or something, wasn't it? I uh, I may have had influence in that one. Yeah, and then they came back and won it, and I would have won so much money, and I cashed out for like two quid. So I'll hold strong, and I'm sure Sweden will will draw with Spain, and I'll be raging. But hey, it is what it is. Spain have only had eighty five percent possession in the game. So, guys, Ben, how long have we been talking for? 47 minutes. Guys, that's enough for this week's podcast, okay? Thanks very much. Thanks for listening. Follow us on all social media. Do what you just need to do. And I'll be back again next week. Fuck Spain. Bye. I'm the slack guy.